Oh. A nice mix of good and dirty. <laughs> yeah. Naked yoga and Mother Earth. I think you said clawing like. I know, like clawing, yeah, which I like. <laughs> I like clawing. Yeah, that's right. Two, Two thumbs, thumbs up. up. Jersey. Jersey. Rubbing on their cars. <laughs> Rubbing on their cars. <laughs> they do wood. And sometimes they mix the two. And then. Where they rub the wood. Don't underestimate yeah. what's going on in somebody's garage. <laughs> you don't want anyone rubbing wood. Idaho. Idaho. I Idaho. I actually said it right. Woohoo! Not Idaho. And who wouldn't love an Idaho? And they're forever. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know what they're doing. <laughs> what's going on in my mouth? I want it to go and be gone. Hi everyone. I'm Janet. I'm Jason. We're Gumbo Mud. Mud. We're here for dark beer. And today we have this sinful beer from a wholesome place. <laughs> right? Great intro. That's what it sounds like. It right? does. Right. So the sinful part is syntax. It's syntax. If you're a sinner, you're getting taxed. Right. And the wholesome part is Mother, Mother Earth. Earth. Oh. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> so it's a, a nice mix of good and dirty. <laughs> yeah. They probably do yoga at Mother Earth, you know, right before they sin afterwards. <laughs> naked yoga, maybe. Naked yoga, there you go. Hey, on. naked yoga at Mother Earth. <laughs> Yeah. It's I I've not had this and right. I've not been to Mother Earth, although right. I had a friend who worked there. Yeah. Um like what is syntax? Does that mean if you're sinning you're getting taxed? Like what do you know the the meaning behind it? I don't know the meaning behind it, but it doesn't it definitely sounds like uh it's like the eleventh amendment or something that if you sin you're gonna get taxed. Right. That's what <laughs> after I, all the Ten Commandments you got the eleventh one is like we're gonna tax you. Thou if shall you don't, not yeah. da, 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 da. If you don't follow these ten the eleventh one we're gonna tax you. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. anyway, um it's an imperial peanut butter stout right. and coming in at an 8.1 alcohol by volume. Yeah, percentage. and a tiny little 12 ounce can, no. which we hate. Come on, Mother Earth, we 16 ounce. We want 16 ounce cans. Exactly. Uh, but 8.1, I've had this, but it's been so long. Like, it's been a really long time. It could be five, six years since really? I've had this beer. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, you're so, old. Uh, yeah, I'm old. <laughs> I've, I've been here in San Diego having craft beer for a long time, so. And I've never had it, so. Yeah. I have had other peanut butter beers, which I'm yes. not going to mention because I don't even, yeah. I, you know, I don't want to compare them to right. this. I like to keep an open blank slate, but right. I'm super excited to try this. Yeah, so the description of this beer that we're bringing you from their can on the website is, it has deep malts, deep dark malts. Um, lead espresso notes. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's kind of a deep dark espresso and it has British crystal meth in it. <laughs> oh really? Oh sorry. The British crystal malts too. Close. Malts, meth. It, it, meth you, when you see malts, crystal, you know. when you see crystal, you automatically yeah. think Breaking Bad. Potato, potato. Potato, yeah. Meth, crystal malt. meth, malts, yeah. Uh, so it has uh, these dark, <laughs> dark espresso note malts and British crystal malts, which I've never heard of. British crystal malts. <laughs> crystal meth. Crystal meth malt and meth, meth malts. No. Wow. Malt, yeah. Contribute to a perfect toffee and caramel flavor, which I don't, I don't remember, but sounds good. All I can think is Ray. I hope you're not watching. <laughs> <laughs> Ray is our good friend who is a very successful. Can we say? Sure. Uh, just in general, we won't say where. He's a very successful. <laughs> Toxicologist. Yes. And yes, and fellow Kunas, if you know what that means. <laughs> he's he's from Louisiana too, right? Meth is a huge problem and making people drop. So we're not joking about meth. Right. At all, but exactly. Jason's not a great reader. <laughs> no. Well, you type this out. It looks like crystal meth, right? Right. No. Um, so anyway. Uh, uh, part of the description is the, despite the dry, the dry finish, there's wonderful molasses character complements a brown cane sugar. So it it's sounding really good. Sounds great. It doesn't even sound like a peanut butter to me. It sounds more like a breakfast stout or mm -hmm. something. Yes. Um, and just enough uh, sugar to finish full body, but never clawing. <laughs> 
Is that what it is? C L O Y cloy. Oh well, it's it's a little hard to pronounce. Yeah. I, yeah, it's like uh, cloying. Cloying. Like cloying, like. That's a weird word. I've never right. heard that. Cloying. Yes, it's a it's a beer drinking term. Term cloying. Cloying. I don't know if I. I don't think I've had right. any of those beers ever. <laughs> you have. Ever a cloying beer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think you said clawing, like. I know, like clawing, yeah, which I like. <laughs> I like clawing. <laughs> clawing, I don't even know what the if hell that it means. It makes you claw, Jason's giving it. That's right. Two, two thumbs, thumbs up. up and five stars. <laughs> exactly. Right. Cloying. Okay. So, anyway. anyway, and then it's supposedly, it has peanut butter in it. <laughs> After all that, after the crystal meth and everything, not only, not, not uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico crystal meth, British, no. <laughs> crystal malts, British crystal malts. We have to look up that more because I don't know what that is. Uh, malts, like. Uh, yeah, but a crystal, like British crystal malt. <laughs> Why, why is that funny? Like a, a British crystal it malt? What is that? It me why you say crystal meth and not crystal malt. Yeah. I've not heard of crystal malt either. Right. But That's why it's funny. There's chocolate malt. Yes. Like you, you can order chocolate malt. Or there's like we talked about Whoppers, which are malt. Malted balls. <laughs> there's a lot going on yes. in the malt world. Right. So so British crystal malts, uh, I, we don't know much right. about, but... Google. <laughs> I don't know. If this beer tastes good, we'll Google it and let you know what a crystal malt is. But or texture. Yeah, exactly. British friend. And exactly. Say, what? What? What the yeah. hell is this? Yeah. Okay, so as far as availability, <laughs> it is available. This beer is available year yes, round. Yes, and has been for a long time. Yes, yep. and um, in the winter of 2015, they did make a bourbon barrel version of this. Yeah. I don't think it was overly popular, and so they kind of like archived that. But um, this is, you know, available in many, many places. And probably made the bar the bourbon barrel rare, so right. people trade it and things like that. Yeah. And I'm sure they'll do it again. 2015 is the last time they did it, so. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. So, uh... Mother Earth has been around for a while, and uh, the, their distribution is obviously all over the West here, uh, all over California, Montana to Washington, um, Arizona, California, and they've expanded to the East, yes. where they're in Ohio, Massachusetts, Tennessee. You don't like the way I, the way I say Massachusetts? People don't like, but <laughs> hey, Southern Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Massachusetts? Yeah, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey, and Jersey, and Jersey. And Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. So, and probably of this video, probably expanding more. So. I think there's lots of centers in Jersey. So. There's a lot of centers on the East Coast. Period. Probably. On the West Coast, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. Okay. So about the brewery. So about this brewery, uh, Mother Earth was born on the passion and vision of two baby booners and a, a millennial. Yeah. Uh, it started in a garage in San Diego where lots of good things. Where most of the craft beer industry in San Diego started. Where you home brewers. You love that. Like, yeah, and the home brew a society here, association here in San Diego is, is, is really big. And they actually, once a year, uh, I went to the home brewers. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't think it was called a festival or something. It's their yearly get together mm -hmm. um, in Temecula at Vail Lake, and it was great. Like yeah. it was just home brewers. Someone's garage. Oh or what? no, no, it was in Vail Lake, <laughs> so it was actually at Vail Lake there in Temecula, where they had booth setups. We yeah. people had RVs out there. We camped. I camped with some friends. Yeah. And there were 200, 250 home brewers where you could try their beers. It was really cool, and they have this every year. Mm -hmm. So. So I, I've probably mentioned in other videos, I'm from in the Midwest. Yeah. In the Midwest, guys are woodworking and like rubbing on their cars. <laughs> rubbing on their cars. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, They're rubbing on their cars. Is, is that lingo for something else? <laughs> well, it starts with rubbing, which probably leads to other things, although I They're wouldn't know rubbing, about that. They're rubbing on their cars. Okay. I am a good Midwest girl. So Midwest guys rub on their cars. They woodwork and they rub, they do wood. <laughs> they get they deal with wood and they rub on their cars. And sometimes they mix the two. And then where they rub the wood. <laughs> I come out here to beautiful sunny California and they're brewing beer wonderful things like this in their garage it, it's so a hobby here in southern california shows, yes like what you know the difference yeah 
Yeah, no, there's so many home brewers in San Diego. It's crazy. I have friends that I've home brewed with. What goes on in garages where you're from? I don't know. We work on a farm. We're, we're welding and trying to fix so plows like what, and tractors. Like, there's nothing else going on because you have to work. Like livestock in your garage? <laughs> no, they didn't have livestock. Just tractors and plows and just storing stuff and, like, and, and fixing it because they were always breaking. Yeah. That's what we did. Well, garages, see, like, yeah. Don't underestimate yeah. what's going on in somebody's garage. Okay, <laughs> don't judge by the cover. And don't peek through the window exactly. either because you don't you don't want anyone rubbing wood. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see that. <laughs> So if you're driving through the Midwest, don't peek in anyone's garage. <laughs> Get the garage doors that are yeah, fully exactly. covered. None of those little peeker little, little, windows. Little peekaboo windows. Okay. Those, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I took a hard left. Yes. Right. Anyway, <laughs> so they started in their garage. <laughs> right. In 2008. 2008. Yeah. It, um, it's kind of like the the start of the craft brew culture. Yeah, it really started to explode once you hit about 2005, six, seven. Yes. Yeah. So this was a family business. Um, Mother Earth combined the husbands, wives, sons, daughters, nieces, nephews, cousins, collected everyone's input, everyone's talent. They all love beer. Which, <laughs> Everyone does. When I hear about like nieces, nephews, cousins, Everyone. I'm thinking like toddlers running around with, you know, <laughs> a big pint, with a brew big, in, big their, pint glass. in their baby bottles. Yeah. But everyone's input contributed to the um, the start of Mother Earth. The business, yeah. And then um, they they incorporated their employees, and that is also considered their family. Yeah. And they have their tap house in old downtown Vista, California. And soon after that, Mother Earth cans, bottles, everything yeah. were all over San Diego. Yeah. And, um, yeah, their tap house there in Vista, they're uh, probably the last five years, they're trying to rejuvenalize, uh, if I say that word right. Rejuvenate. Rejuvenate. Thank revitalize. you. Revitalize. Revitalize. I combined the two. Yeah, I like it. They revitalized downtown Vista. Mm -hmm. And so Mother Earth was one of the first breweries that are down there. And I think Belching Beaver's down there now. Mm -hmm. Been down there for a while. And they're just, it's really actually getting nice. And yeah. that, that little downtown Vista area where you can walk and hit different breweries, tap houses, mm -hmm. get a slice of pizza, bring it over. Um, the Mother Earth tap house there in downtown Vista is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I've not been, so it sounds nice. Yeah. So so, so yeah, their their beers are uh, they're, they're, they bottle and can. They're all over San Diego and like mm -hmm. we said, distributed. Um, I say that right, distributed. I actually said it right. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. They're distributed throughout all the states that we talked about and probably more now. And so uh, they're they're just going to be all over the place, mm -hmm. like most of the San Diego breweries. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, in 2016, yeah. Mother Earth opened an additional production facility in Nampa, Idaho, not to be confused with in Napa, California. Yeah. So Nampa, yeah. Idaho, outside of Boise. Yeah, probably a little suburb. Yes. Which Idaho is beautiful. So yeah. there they have the capability of uh, turning out more than 100,000 barrels. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, it just adds for their uh, distribution yeah. um, there in the Northwest. And every state has different laws, um, as we know, about brewing and taxes and things like mm -hmm. that. And so uh, Idaho is probably a little more lax, you know, with those. I don't know if they are. They're pretty. I think so, because remember we talk, we talk about Wanaki, Untitled Art. That's why they, they're in Wisconsin, because of the taxes and things like that are less. Yeah. Than places like California or even Florida or Arizona. Lots of rules in California, Lots for of rules sure. in but California. But I so. think there also is in Idaho. Idaho. I, Idaho. <laughs> Idaho. Idaho. Not Idaho. But, I mean, that's one of the... If you could put a brewery somewhere, Idaho, freaking beautiful there, so... And who wouldn't love an Idaho? So, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. So that they're expanding more, and I'm sure that uh, their production is ramped up, and um, just the popularity of Mother Earth there in the Northwest, and yes. they can they can hit Montana and all those places uh, that their distribution is a lot easier than. Look I know. At you. Ever, ever since you said it wrong, I got oh, it right. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> you ready to try it? <laughs> I'm ready. You ready? Yes. I am too. I haven't had this in so long. I can't wait. I know. So these are little 16 ounce. These are minis. These are minis. So we're each gonna we're each gonna pop one for ourselves. Get our own. Woo! Mmm. Oh. Nice and foamy. It is. Yes. Exactly what I expect from an 8.1. 8.1. Whoa. Wow. 
Lots of head, lots of carbonation. Ooh. Yeah, it's See, a finish point. One that thing one. I can say I like about these little cans. Um, it depends upon the head, yeah. but almost always you can dump one of these little yeah. into the Snickers and the, and the 16 and ounce Sifner, yeah. like the perfect, yeah, the perfect amount. Thank you for pouring mine first. Yeah, I think uh, I tried to pour it good. Mm, I'm smelling it, you guys. I'm not gonna tell. Can you smell the peanut butter? Yeah, super a mad head. Well, creamy. <laughs> It's the way I poured it, right? Well, yes. But you think like, I, you think I would know better by now? That's like a three finger head. It is. <laughs> I got like a one to two finger head. Yes, so. three for small fingers. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, so appearance, what do you think? It's it's a, like a lighter beige mm -hmm. color. Uh, it was it was pretty dark brown when it came out. It looked like an eight point one to me. Yeah. When we poured it. I can't do much rolling because it's. Yeah. All the way to the top but you get the, like the mahogany towards the bottom yeah really light light head though yeah it, bubbles are nice it's really foamy very, even mine that it has a little head yeah very creamy light colored mm -hmm. head so yeah i think it looks i've had many in this in this eight percent range yeah. so it looks like a true eight percent yeah um uh mostly nice like bubbles, a, 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 a coca-cola color yeah. With the mahogany That's a good bottom. good comparison. Yeah. Yeah. It almost looks like a Coke. It really does. So yeah. it's what I expect of an 8% and yeah. something that's uh, a peanut butter uh, infused or flavored beer. So yeah. I think it looks spot on. I'm okay. giving it a 5 on yeah. appearance. I'm with you. I'll give it a 5. It looks really good. It looks, you said it almost looks like a Coke. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> it does. It has that right. dark kind of carbonation, mm -hmm. the dark colors. It looks... It looks really good. Yes. It's, it's definitely lighter. Like I said, I haven't had this in five or six years. Mm -hmm. So, but it looks really good. They may have changed their uh, recipe. They may have. You never know. So yeah, why yeah. don't you give it a, and a every, whiff? Every batch is different. You getting peanut butter? I do, but not initially. It's kind of okay. like the uh, secondary smell. Okay. Um, what are you getting? More brown sugar. That's good. I yeah. like, like brown sugar. Yes, brown sugar's a home run in most anything. Yeah. Uh, brown sugar and vanilla. Ooh, I like that. Yes, like it's like vanilla ex extract. It right? does. With like you said, a little bit of sugar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Vanilla, brown sugar for sure. Definitely brown, brown sugar. sugar more more so than vanilla. It's almost like my mom used to bake oatmeal cookies, and she'd add the brown sugar and the vanilla extract mm -hmm. in the oatmeal. I'm not getting oatmeal, but I'm getting those yes. flavors. Yep. Well, brown sugar and vanilla almost create like a syrupy yeah. maple molasses. That wow, that brown, anything good. brown sugar creates that thick yeah. consistency, which yeah. this does look like despite it being 8.1, <laughs> it looks thick. Yeah, so what, what do you give? What do you give the aroma? I love the aroma. Me too. Um, I'm not even that disappointed that I'm not getting peanut butter. Me neither. I like everything that I'm getting, so Me too. I'm gonna give the lack of peanut butter a pass. I'm gonna take off a half a point. Are you? And go 4.5. Okay. But I really love the way it smells. I actually gave it a five. You did. I like vanilla. I like mm -hmm. when it smells like a baked good. Like you said, it's brown sugar and vanilla. Yes. That smells like you're about to cook, about to cook cookies. Yes. And bake cookies. Bake cookies. Sorry, you're about to bake cookies. Yes. And that's what I want in, a, in my stouts. I want that. Incredible. So how can how can I not give it a five? Like that's what mm -hmm. it smells like. Like I want to drink this and eat cookies. I know. <laughs> it smells incredible. It smells like, really good. Oh. Yeah. So go ahead and yeah, give it a try. I can't, I can't believe I, it's been five or six years since and I I've had this. I've never had this. So. It's, it smells so good. I get I get so excited <laughs> for beers I've never had because. Wow. I mean, there's a there's a lot, but yeah, especially here in San Diego, there's just so many beers that it's hard to keep up sometimes. You're probably getting the peanut butter now, vanilla. What are you getting? You get the peanut butter on the end, but it's the end? super slight. Okay, what are you getting then? What's the what's the thing that emphasizes it's the, the most? aroma? The aroma comes through. You're getting vanilla so. and brown sugar. But everything's uh, pretty diluted, which I would expect, again, from it's something in, in an 8% range. It's a beer, too. So, so. you're a point over 8. You're at 8.1. Mm. It's pretty thin. Yeah. A little watery, but it's yeah. flavorful. Yeah. It's 
it's good. It's good for an 8.1. I get, I get the vanilla, I get the brown sugar, but it's all very light. It is light. Mm -hmm. I get more carbonation. Yeah. Right. It's a lot of carbonation. Dry. Dry on the end for sure. De yeah, very dry. Mm-hmm. Um, Which I'm, peanut butter and peanut butter is dry. Like you, yeah. if you've ever had to give <laughs> to a dog. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going the dog route. If you've ever had to give a sweet little dog their right. medicine, you see, occasionally wrap it in peanut butter, and they're forever. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Don't make me give it a visual. <laughs> don't, don't do it. But it's that dryness that is associated with peanut butter, and it's almost they now have peanut butter powders. Yeah. That are supposed to be a healthier version of peanut butter without the hydrogenated oil, which makes right. peanut butter um, unhealthy to some. Right. Right. So there's powdered peanut butters, which have the good components of peanut butter. This reminds me of that. So I wonder... Yeah. If that's what they use. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting, like you said, a little peanut butter on the end. Mm -hmm. I'm getting almost more overwhelming vanilla, but not a sweet vanilla. Yeah. Right? It's not a sweet vanilla, but it's vanilla. It's just not sweet. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much all I'm getting. I'm not really getting much of the brown sugar. Mm -hmm. I'm getting all this vanilla that's not sweet and then a little peanut butter, peanut butter at yeah. the end. Yeah, that sounds... That's what you're getting? Yeah, that's yeah. about right. Yeah. So it's not, you know, it's not a lot of layers. It's, it's pretty straightforward, but it's good. Yeah, you just want it to be a little sweeter. If you like like a light... It is vanilla. You though. know, Ooh. it's light. It's fairly refreshing. Yeah. I think it could use a little more carbonation. Can you? I think there's almost too much carbonation. You do? Yeah, I think I there's like a lot of carbonation. It, I feel like it would make it more refreshing. Yeah. Like it's... I'm getting a lot of carbonation for me mm -hmm. um, and my palate, but uh, what do you give the taste? I like it. Um, again, you know, it's hard to go from these different beers yeah. that we go to. So keeping in mind that it is an 8%. Yeah. Which is, it tastes a little light for an 8 it does. I think it's a. I think it's a three point five on taste. That's exactly what I was going to give it. If it was sweeter, I would give it a four or four point five. Mm -hmm. It has a nice flavor to it. it it's does. just not sweet. It's this kind yeah. of just dry middle of the road vanilla. Mm -hmm. It is vanilla. It's just not a sweet vanilla. It's not like a vanilla you put in your coffee. A coffee creamer or something like that where you get this nice vanilla sweet taste or cookies like you bake where you get this nice sweet vanilla it's vanilla well vanilla, it's just kind of yeah straight without adding sugar to it or something vanilla right? extract or yeah. vanilla is not sweetened by itself exactly That's why you add yeah. the sugar and the brown sugar or the mm -hmm. stevia or whatever you're adding to your recipe to yes. enhance the vanilla flavor. Right. So it's like they stop, they add the vanilla. Extract, and that's it. And then that was it. Yes. You have to add the sweetness to enhance yeah. the vanilla flavor. You almost want to put a pack or two of stevia or sugar in this. Yeah, which would probably really <laughs> blow it up. It'd probably be foaming yeah. all over. But it has a great vanilla taste it to it. It's just that vanilla extract. Like yes. you said, it's not sweet. It's just, and that's why I gave it a 3.5. You didn't have a little more sweetness to it, I'd give it a 4 or 4.5 easily, mm -hmm. easily because yes. it has a great vanilla taste yes. and just a tiny bit of peanut butter for a peanut butter. It almost should say vanilla, imperial vanilla stout mm -hmm. instead of peanut butter because I'm not getting much peanut butter at all. You either. Well, I think the powdered, pe again, I'm wondering. It's the powdered, maybe. The powdered peanut butters are yeah. not as sweet as like yeah. your traditional Jif or... Yeah. I don't even know. I don't buy peanut butter. Skippy. Skippy. What's up, Skippy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Skippy yeah. Jif, thank you. Like those already come, you know, with the sweetness. I don't, I think the powdered versions yeah. of peanut butter are people f uh, more who are um, watching their sugar intake, maybe yeah. a little more conscious of the labels and trying to reduce the sugar. So. I actually like the peanut butter in this. Yeah. Because I don't like a ton of peanut butter. So I think it's good. I just wish it was just a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as far as the body, it's an eight, body and texture, it's an 8.1. Yeah. It seems a little lighter and watery to me. Yeah, it does. Um, it doesn't taste like an 8 to me. 
It doesn't to me either. I would say I would say it's again a three point five, which is uh, it's above average. Um, it's more like a six and a half, maybe mm -hmm. six six and a half, right? It looks darker. It does look dark. Than yeah. the average eight or anything above an eight. Yeah, that's why the appearance we both gave it a five. It yeah. looked it looked really yeah. dark. But the text the the mouth texture the texture of the body yeah, yeah is just um, yeah. It's 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 more watery and the flavors are watery, but yeah, I'm with you. I give it a three point five mm -hmm. two. I think it's above average. I wish it was a true eight, a little thicker, because mm -hmm. um, it seems more like a six six and a half to me. So it's definitely above average. We both give it a three point five, which I think is good. I just wish it was a little thicker. So yes, yeah. Um, so as far as the finish, the finish, um, the dry vanilla again, right? Yeah, it's it's a super dry. No again. sweetness. I'm in, I'm can't I would love a, a cold bottle of water like to wash it down but yeah the flavors are mm. good there's nothing foul tasting mm. or uh, unusual or anything that's you know yeah. popping out that just doesn't belong everything's yeah. really well blended it's just dry and um, almost a little bitter because of the lack of sweetness tiny bit yeah. But it finishes like it, it, it uh, evaporates, I should, that's the right word, from your palate mm -hmm. really fast. Mm -hmm. A little bit of bitter, but then it's gone and you're like, okay, I don't taste anything now. Yeah. So it doesn't leave a bad taste. It's not a great sweet taste, but it actually, I think it finishes kind of good. Mm -hmm. Except for, I'm not, I'm, once again, we watch our videos and I don't like bitter that much. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad bitter though. It's a little bit bitter like you were saying and then it dissipates and yeah. it's gone. Right. Yeah, so I, I would prefer more in the other direction, like a little more of a long-lasting, sweeter, more flavorful finish rather than a bitter kind of ending quick, you know. Yeah. So um, I'm going to go with a four. Go with a four the for the finish? Yeah. Okay. Uh, overall, I like it. Yeah. Um, I think it's a great, uh, in this um, kind of introductory stage, if you're new to dark beers, um, I think it's good to start at the lower percentages. Yeah, and this and would be a good one. I think this is a great one. It's um, it's available all all year round, which is it's good. It's easy to find. Easy it's, to find. It's easy to drink. Yeah. Um, you know, you can identify the flavors, the smells. Yeah. Things like that versus beers that have a lot going on. You're like, what am I smelling? What am I tasting? What's going on in my mouth? Yeah. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, this is this is a nice introductory beer, and I like it overall. You give it a four. Yeah. So did I. I think it finishes good um, for someone that doesn't like bitter like me. Mm -hmm. It's a quick bitter and it's gone. Yeah. So I actually like the way it finishes. Um, if if the finish is going to linger, then I want something sweet. Yes. If it's not gonna be sweet, I don't want it to linger. I want it to go and be gone. And be gone. <laughs> that way I can have another because we love the aroma. Mm -hmm. uh, we love the appearance, the aroma, even the taste. Like it's it's a good vanilla beer. Um, it's just, I like to actually like to finish. It's not bad because it, it dissipates, it's gone. Mm -hmm. And I'm ready to take another sip. I'm actually drinking this a lot actually because I actually, mm -hmm. I like the finish. It you finishes are. well. I'm usually I, way ahead of you, no. right? Yeah, the finish is nice. Even though it's a little bitter, as soon as I take a sip of it, then I get the vanilla again and mm -hmm. a little bit of the chocolate and stuff. So I give it a four. I actually like the finish. Yeah, so. good. So for a total, Janet, what'd you give it? My total for uh, syntax, syntax. <laughs> was a 4.0 out of 5.0. Um, this was my first time trying it. Like it? I really did like it. Yeah. yeah. I, for uh, 8.1 ABV, it's got a lot of great components. Um, you know, just a, a little light on the flavors and... And the body and texture, a little light. Yeah, but yeah. again, you know, that's hard to come up with when you're in the 8% range. So yeah. I think based on it being an 8%, it's got a lot of positive things going on. And if you're new to dark beer, I think this is a great place to start. Yeah, I gave it a 4.2, actually. I actually liked it. Besides mm -hmm. the finish being a little bitter, um, I like pretty much everything about it. Um, I wish the body... And the texture was a little thicker because mm -hmm. I like thicker beers. But yeah. yeah, you gave it a 4.0. I gave it a 4.2. Gumbo Mud Reviews a 4.1.
I've had this beer in five or six years. You've never had it. We actually like this beer. It's yes. good. Uh, the only negative is a 16 ounce can. <laughs> we don't get a 16. Yes. We need a 16 Mother Earth. So uh, I like the yin yang of Mother Earth hmm, and Syntax. <laughs> I like that. Yes. So um, Gumbo Mud reviews are 4.1. We both like this beer. I think we'll have it again. I can't wait yeah, to, I would have uh, again. to take you down to um, their tap room downtown Vista there and try it yes. on, on draft and see how you like it. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you guys for joining us. I hope you liked the video. Click the like button if you like. Subscribe um, for more dark beers. We are bringing you dark beer reviews constantly, all, all the time. time, all dark beers. Any suggestions, write them in the comments. We'll grab them if we can and give you a, a true review of sin. Sinful beers. Yes. <laughs> simple beers. Simple beers, I said. Not sinful, I said simple. Not no. simple. Complex. No, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Thank you uh, so much. We'll see you next time. Bye, you guys. Bye. Woo.